Not gonna lie, I actually forget that these come out sometimes. Dia is officially out. 3.5 is actually live, and Dia's Collective Miscellany is here. It's called Passion of the Burning Sands. Hopefully, we'll have Dane Swift, maybe Alice, talk about it. So, let's see what Hayo wants us to do with Dia. Anyone who wanders the world will tell you that there's nothing like a dependable travel companion to make the journey easier and safer. Well, the traveler would. Especially if it's someone like Dia, a mercenary from Sumeru. Though she may see herself as just one among many, she is no ordinary mercenary. Her sharp mind, bravery, and honesty are rare qualities that truly make her a rose among thorns. Remember this from the... Got a job for me? The teaser? Raised among mercenaries, Dia has a wealth of experience under her belt and outstanding combat capabilities. She effortlessly combines swordsmanship, hand-to-hand -hand combat, and the power of her pyrovision in battle as she skillfully oh, completes sick. an eclectic range of jobs while keeping her client protected. By choosing the right moment to act, risks can be avoided and tasks completed more efficiently. Placing Dia in your party increases the movement speed of your own party members between the daytime hours of 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. This oh, talent right, does yeah. not take effect in domains, trounce domains, or the spiral abyss. Dia's oh. normal attack so uses like both her claymore and her fists to combo up to four strikes that deal physical damage to enemies. Using her charged attack, Dia drains oh, okay. stamina over time. She's, she's not a, a spin one. Rapid slashes, she's like Vado. With an especially powerful slash. Dia's elemental skill has different oh, effects depending on the present combat situation. When there is no fiery sanctum field created by Dia herself currently present in combat, her elemental skill will cast Indomitable Flame, dealing AoE okay. pyro damage and creating a fiery sanctum field. If a fiery sanctum field created by Dia is currently present in combat, her elemental skill will unleash Ranging Flame which performs a leaping attack that deals AoE pyro damage before recreating the fiery sanctum field at her new position. A field oh, created so in this way will inherit the remaining duration of the previous field. Range of oh. flame can be used only once within a single fiery sanctum field's duration. When so an enemy the within a fiery sanctum basically. field takes damage, the field will unleash a coordinated attack, dealing AoE pyro damage to them based on Dia's attack and max HP. This effect can be triggered once per set time period. Attack and match, max HP. Active characters within the Fiery Sanctum field gain increased resistance to interruption. When characters in the field take damage, a portion of that damage will be redirected into Redmain's Blood. Dia will then take this damage after a time. When the redirected damage stored by Redmain's Blood reaches or exceeds a certain percentage of Dia's max HP, no further damage will be redirected. Only oh, one fiery no. sanctum created by Dia herself can exist at a time. After unlocking the talent Stalwart and True, when her HP falls below a certain amount, Dia recovers a percentage of her max HP, then continues okay. to recover a portion of max HP at regular intervals for a set duration. Oh, wow, I didn't know this that. This effect okay. can be triggered once per set time period. Okay. You're dead meat! <laughs> Who's that me? When Dia casts her elemental no burst, words. she unleashes her burning rage, casts her unwieldy blade aside, and enters the blazing lioness state, increasing her resistance to interruption. In this state, Dia automatically unleashes a series of flame mains fists, dealing pyro damage. When the oh, duration so you, can, ends, you don't control it she yourself. She executes an incineration drive, dealing AOE pyro damage. Maybe you All can, damage though. dealt by Flame Main's fists and incineration drive is based on Dia's attack and max HP. Also, uh, while in state, Dia will be unable to use her elemental skill or perform normal charged or plunging attacks. Her normal oh, so attack doesn't and count elemental as normal skill attacks? will be replaced by Roaring Barrage. Using Roaring Barrage shortly after each Flame Main's Fist will increase the attack speed of the next Flame Main's Fist. Oh, that's actually good. If a fiery okay. sanctum field created by Dia's own elemental skill exists when she unleashes her elemental burst, that's a good Dia pair will action. retrieve it, then recreate the field once Blazing Lioness's duration expires. The recreated field will inherit the remaining duration of the retrieved field. 
after oh. unlocking the talent Unstinting Sucker. For a short period after Dia retrieves a fiery sanctum field using Molten Inferno Ranging Flame or Leonine Bite, she will take decreased damage when absorbing damage from Red Mane's blood. I guess that's, that's the way you can, can melt, Kaya. <laughs> set time period. Additionally, for a short period after Dia unleashes Molten Inferno and Dominable Flame, she will grant all party members the Gold Forged Form state. This state will further increase characters' resistance to interruption wow. when they are within a fiery sanctum field. That's this actually not bad. Triggered once per set time period. Yeah, Mia just got annihilated Although and she was her fine. reputation as the Flame Mane has spread far and wide, Dia has never aspired to fame. Rather, her focus is on consistently completing each job entrusted to her and on protecting those around her. Dia's combat strategy is centered around okay. her elemental skill. She starts by using it to create a fiery sanctum, which assists right. teammates in combat by redirecting damage away from them and providing coordinated attacks. At an opportune moment, she uses Ranging Flame to deal another bout of AoE pyro damage to enemies. Right, so recess for skill. When energy is full, Dia unleashes her elemental burst and enters the Cosmos blazing world, lion state. All? In this state, Mono burst? No. she uses Roaring Barrage to increase the attack speed of Flame Main's fist before finishing with an incineration drive, overpowering Say. her foes with her flaming lioness claws. Collecting so you wouldn't do it. You wouldn't do the skill first. Commissions is a mercenary's bread and butter. But the commissions undertaken by mercenaries differ from those handled by adventurers. Mercenary commissions are more commercial in nature, and the tasks involved are more varied. Many criminals, heroes, and other larger-than-life figures emerge from this trade as the euphoria of strength and success goes to their heads. But you ever think so things that gets tired of these? Who knows that delusions of grandeur only make surviving in the treacherous mercenary world all the more difficult. As someone who began life in the desert, Dia has been confronted with issues of belief and forced to make difficult decisions on many occasions. She may wear a stern gaze, she looks but so she treats good. others with fairness and generosity. I would even say that she, of all mercenaries, is a pioneer of living a genuine life, attuned to the realities of the world around her. Wow, yeah. Kind of just ignores what, not ignores, but deals with what she has to deal with. Well, I definitely have some things I'm happy about to hear there and some things not so happy to, about to hear. Um, one, I'd say the biggest thing for me, honestly, is just the resistance to interruption. That's probably like one of the biggest things because, I mean, that was pretty handy. Like, Yoi Mia was literally doing her whole attack string and I'm glad they showed Yoi Mia of all characters because she's the one that really wants to get her whole attack string off and she was able to with the uh, mitigation there, or the resistance interruption. Cause she got her whole animation off and didn't even get stopped at once. So that's a pretty big plus. Um, unfortunately, it looks like the Pyro app is like a little too long in between. If it was a bit faster, it'd be nice, like with her skill. The passive is, is kind of cool too. The alt, unfortunately, it seems it doesn't work with like Singcho and Yelan, cause he said it doesn't actually count as normal attacks. It counts as like burst damage. So burst damage a lot like, you know, it, it won't coordinate with Sing Cho's rain swords or Elon's arrows. So that's kind of unfortunate. But um, yeah, physical attacks are just good old physical attacks. The skill is going to get you some mitigation, I imagine, with like the talent level going up, uh, which is going to be nice. So you really kind of have to pick your your choice. Like, do you want to play her as a burst like damage dealer if that's an option? Or you play her as like a support, but it is day one. Uh, I haven't even gotten to the game yet to really like ch check it out and whatnot. So this is just the miscellany. There's still a lot more to learn, especially this early on. But yeah, let me know in the comments what you guys think about Dia so far. If you pulled her, if you're playing her right now, checking her out, seeing what she can do. Um, but yeah, I'll definitely give it some time before I give my full thoughts on Dia and uh, you know give her a shot first. You know, if anything, but. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm a little, you know, I'm on the fence about it. You know, we'll see tomorrow. I'll be playing tomorrow and trying to try her out. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. And yeah, that'll be it for me. Good luck on the polls. And I will see you guys in the next one.